introduce our distinguished guest, Mr. Lee, from the Pledge of Allegiance this evening. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. This evening, I have two fine representatives, student representatives from Shawnee Elementary School. We have Rowan Galliano, fifth grade student, with Mr. Ellison. Uh, Rowan is our current student president of our Cases Club. He's also a participant in the Reading Olympics and enjoys playing basketball, baseball, and is a very avid Eagles fan. <laughs> and we have Liana Cole, fourth grade student with Mrs. Wharton's class. She is our student vice president of our K Kids Club and is also a participant on our newspaper staff, plays trumpet for our band, is in our chorus, enjoys basketball, lacrosse, and soccer, and has three beautiful sisters. to our students for taking time out of their schedule to um, open the meeting with the pledge. Um, roll call. Um, we have it. Ramirez, okay. Just prior to um, moving into the superintendent's report, uh, I'd like to ask for a moment of silence and reflection regarding the recent tragedy um, that was endured by students and the staff at the Marjorie Stillman Douglas High School uh, last Wednesday. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Reinhardt, Superintendent's Report? Yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, I want to uh, just, uh, if I can, try to um, um, share with any concerned parents or students the fact that um, since last week, administrators and uh, staff members have been talking uh, and conversing about the needs of security within our school district. I just want to assure you that those conversations are taking place and uh, we had a lengthy conversation with our board this evening uh, about our security and uh, as I think you know with our security and our behavior regarding school security has changed and evolved over time. Most of that is um, based upon our needs here at Easton. Some of our behavior has been altered and changed by events such as the tragedy and, uh, that we uh, experienced in Florida. But I just want to assure everyone that we have um, been spending the biggest portion of our time over the last week on matters involving our district security. Um, I would like to draw attention to the article that was in the paper regarding Valerie <coughs> Davis and her wonderful uh, means of trying to think of people who are faced with tragic circumstances. She is a talented artist. We're so fortunate to have her with us. And uh, I'm speaking of the fact that she spent the biggest part of her weekend creating these uh, beautiful uh, portraits. She has done this now, so sadly, uh, over and over again when tragedy has struck close to home and also far away. You may recall that at uh, New Newtown, when that uh, set of circumstances unfolded, uh, Val was one of the first individuals from our area to try to um, assure those uh, uh, parents and family members that others from far away were thinking of them. And here she is, sadly, doing the same thing again. But thank goodness she does this, because I do know for a fact that it means a great deal to the people who uh, she's memorializing with these beautiful portraits. So I'd like to extend my thanks to her, and uh, if you will, raise up her name as uh, one of the uh, individuals in our district that has tremendous heart for others. Uh, 
on a different kind of note. I hope that you saw recently that uh, our uh, math counts team at Eastland Area Middle School took third place, and that was in a competition with 22 other middle schools. And unfortunately, unless you read the article, you didn't realize, in some cases, somebody say, well, third place, you didn't come in first. But the top six teams were given trophies, and so we landed right up there, and we're thrilled to death for their success, and, and um, we thank the uh, local papers for carrying that uh, news to the community. So I want to congratulate the staff members and the students who were involved in that competition. And um, there's a great article, uh, was, uh, there was an, a, a great article in both of our local papers uh, regarding their success in that competition with 22 other schools. You may recall that our board has talked about making sure that we keep, uh, continue the practice of recognizing community partners, groups and individuals who have uh, given up their, of their time and resources in helping us in our mission here in the, pu uh, the public schools of Easton. And tonight we'd like to recognize two different uh, organizations, if you will, First, we'd like to recognize Greater Shiloh Church, and we have a number of individuals from the church who are present this evening. So could I ask you to come forward here to the podium and um, be recognized as representatives from the congregation? Terrific. Thank you. Church is, has partnered with us on many different activities, but um, this was very special, and you may have seen the articles, again, that were in the paper related to uh, distributing winter coats for students in need, and uh, could I ask, uh, how many coats? 167. 167 winter coats. Isn't that fantastic? It's just fantastic. On behalf, on behalf of the Board of Education, um, we certainly want to present you with a certificate of recognition um, for your generosity and your outstanding community service um, by providing the, those winter coats uh, to the students in the community. So if you can come up and receive this for the group, please. generous contribution to students at Tracy Elementary School. And um, I can't uh, begin to tell you uh, the goodness that followed your generous gifts. So 
Uh, please know that uh, lots of families were touched by that and will be touched by that, and um, we um, uh, share the joy in your new business uh, venture there. Well, I say new. You opened in uh, within the year, right? Uh, that's that's right. A little over a year ago. A little over a year. We've been so. in Strasburg for about nine years. We're uh -huh. not affiliated with the Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, uh, we, we're thrilled to have your business here in the district and being a partner with us in the school district. So thank you very much, and I ate there last week. <laughs> <laughs> so we look forward to doing more. Our Strasburg store, uh, on average, I think last year ended up raising $25,000 from all the organizations with all the different schools around. Sure. So this is a new store. As it grows, it will do more and more. I think we did something with Easton High School last year for the music program. Yes. We'll probably do that again this year. So Great. we'll do a lot more. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. about community college and uh, their successes and uh, a little bit about the budget as well. Good. Yes. Well, good evening. It's, it's great to see all of you. Those of you that have been here for a few years, you've seen me a few times. I'm actually in my sixth year as a, as a college president. Um, I will tell you if you're not anywhere I'd rather be or anything I'd rather do than be the president of North Hampton Community College. It's an extraordinary place. And what I like about these opportunities, it gives me a little bit of a chance to tell you about what's going on at your community college. So if you'll bear with me, I have a PowerPoint, I have a number, I will find I talk pretty quickly, I can move through a lot of you know images pretty quickly, but I think this helps give you a sense of what's going on at the college. I will start with the same slide I always start with. If you've heard me the other five years, I started with the same slide. To understand your community college, College. I think it's important to understand that we are a college of the community. We're changing all the time. As this community changes and the needs of the community change, we change and develop new and different programs. When PPNL said they needed line workers, up went the polls, and this is line worker graduation. So, just to give you an example, but the same in healthcare, no matter what the field, we're changing constantly to meet those needs. This is Northampton Community College today. We are the largest college in Northeast Pennsylvania with nearly 30,000 students um, and about 1,800 employees, 106 different degrees and certificate programs, and a lot of community education class. Uh, this is our Bethlehem campus, the campus I think most of you are probably most aware of. We also have a south side campus on the south side of Bethlehem with the Fowler Center, Old Bethlehem Steel Building. And as you know, in the next month, we're going to be opening an educational outreach center downtown and the old police station as well to make sure that we're meeting every need that's part of what this community wants us to be doing. Um, we're the only community college still in Pennsylvania that has residence halls. It makes for a very interesting place on our end. What that means is that our students come not just from this county, but from all around. We have students from 42 countries, 25 states, and 53 counties. It makes it an incredibly interesting place to study. This is what our students look like. More than a third of our students are first generations, first in their family to go to college. Most of our students work to come to the college. Um, many of them work 30 hours a week, median age 25, median age 21, average age 25. Our youngest student right now is 16, our oldest is 85. So anybody wants to come to the community college, there's plenty of opportunity. And 40% of our students are students of color, once again making us the most diverse college in Northeast Pennsylvania. In Northampton County, literally one out of four high school graduates comes directly to us. 90% of those students stay in the community. The number of students that come to us actually grows three years after they graduate. It actually goes to 38% of all those graduating seniors have taken at least one course with us. So we're serving this community and creating the workforce. 
We're incredibly committed to affordability and access. Um, we are the most affordable college in all of Pennsylvania. We're blessed to have the largest private foundation in terms of support for a community college in the Commonwealth. We give out about $46 million in aid annually. Most of that, as you might imagine, is federal financial aid through the Pell Grant, but we have 600 private scholarships that we give out as well. Incredibly important. As affordable as we are, 52% of our students need that aid in order to come to us. 46% of them are on Pell Grants, which put them in the lowest socioeconomic status bracket. And we know that but for us, 40% of our students don't think they could have any college opportunity at all. So think about the number of students we have, take 40%, those students would not have a college opportunity without us. So we work hard to raise private dollars. Our foundation is one of the best that you'll find in the country among community colleges six times. We've been given the top award from CASE, the fundraising organization, more than any other community college in the country. These are some of our successful alums. Roger Ross Williams, who won an Oscar as a winning director, first African American to win that award. Carol Guzzi, a five time Pulitzer Prize winning photographer, and some local individuals you'll recognize as well. Mr. Williams is an East grad. Okay, good. Yeah, and incredibly successful. Yes. Yeah, great point. And, and our graduates go to all sorts of great places. This is just an example of some of the places our graduates go to. Um, actually, a third of the incoming transfer class at Lehigh this past year were graduates of North Hampton Community College. Um, and we send students to Lafayette as well. This is good. <laughs> um, this is how much we cost. So you can take 18 credits each semester for the year for $4,230. Um, it's really an incredible educational value. And we have a faculty I've put up against any faculty I've, I've ever worked with. Every year in the state of Pennsylvania, a single professor is chosen as a professor of the year. Public, private, four year, two year, doesn't matter. One professor, three out of the past seven professors of the year in Pennsylvania are on our faculty. That tells a pretty good story. You know, and we're your local community college, but we are a leader among community colleges nationally. These are just some examples. We were selected by the Aspen Institute, one of the top 150 community colleges in the country. We're a leader college in achieving the dream of national initiative. Um, named in the top 10 community colleges in the country for, for movement and, and leadership around technology. We were one of the first nine colleges in the country named a Green Ribbon College. Our students win a lot of awards through PTK. We've also got the region's fastest growing online learning programs, <coughs> number four among the 117 Pennsylvania community colleges with online programs. And for students who are place bound in this community and trying to finish their four year degree, they can actually finish their degree on our campus at Bloomsburg and East Stroudsburg in these programs. We're looking at expanding those opportunities for our students. We have some exciting things going on on the South Side campus, the Fowler Center. We're creating a center for innovation and entrepreneurship. The first floor of that building will be entirely renovated, utilizing state funds and private privately raised dollars that we have. So we're going to push out across the entire curriculum teaching around creative thinking and innovation for all of our students in every one of our disciplines. So really a, a wonderful way for us to broaden what we do. This is just some renderings to show you what that space looks like. As the world of manufacturing is changing, we are changing too. A couple years ago, we got a great grant from the Department of Labor, which allowed us to upgrade our Center for Advanced Technology to put in place really the types of automation that are part of what, what companies need today in terms of the training that we're doing, just to give you some examples of kind of what that looks like on our campus. We actually have embedded in our training center a manufacturer doing some of their training right on site, Vic Tollick right down, down the road, so that in on an ongoing way, day to day, we're talking with manufacturers about what are the needs that they have for us. This is that PAC grant that we put in place. It was a $10 million grant we got from the Department of Labor along with LTRIC and Luzerne Community College. It allowed us to launch nine new career pathway programs that have brought 460 new students to us and allowed us to put in place $2.1 million in, in new infrastructure. This is a huge undertaking, maybe one of the most important things this college will do in the next decade. Students come to us, 
because we're open access, but we want to make sure that they're successful. And we're putting in place a series of student success initiatives. We're expanding our advising capacity, the number of advisors we have and what they do with our students. We're pushing back into the high school, some college readiness work. We're talking with your folks about that, and we'll be debuting that in Easton this coming year. We've expanded our, our dual enrollment programs, um, <coughs> trying to make sure that as many students as can have the opportunity to do that. We're expanding our first year experience program on campus for our students. We put in place a new curriculum starting this next year with guided pathways to help students early on figure out what career directions they may want to go in. And to help us with all this, we put in place a new office of college connection specialists. And we have a couple of specialists that are, well, here's one from Northampton <laughs> County, one from Monroe County, who spend time here <laughs> in your high school getting to know your guidance counselors, your students, to make sure that, the, that really the pathway from you to us is clearer than ever before. Our goal in doing that is simply to make sure we're meeting the needs of every student coming out of the high school as we possibly can. Here are nine areas of study in the guided pathways if you look at our website. We also have a wonderful honors program. Um, we have a little over 350 students now in our honors program, some of the best and brightest students coming out of high school. Uh, 34 of those students come out of Easton. Those students go on and get four years college scholarships at all sorts of wonderful places. It's a great place to start and get moving that way. Six months after our students graduate, we, we inter interview them, survey them to find out do you have a job in your field of study or have you gone on to a four-year college? These are our numbers moving in a good direction at 93%. Um, these are some pass rates in, in the various areas where our students go out into to fields where they have to take exams to, to be certified. You'll see that those are all very high numbers, many of them the highest that you'll find in, in Pennsylvania. Some median salaries, especially in, in some of the higher areas for our students coming out of Northampton Community College. And as you might imagine, they're employed everywhere in the community. This is just a short list of where our students are employed in the community. So Easton, this is what the fall semester looked like for Easton students. Um, about 1,100 students from Easton Area School District came to us, about 43% of those full-time, the majority of those women, um, and the majority of those also students of color. Um, this is coming out of the high school uh, this past fall, a little over 20%. Many of your students go into our nursing program at our nursing ceremony this past fall. Here's the students from here that actually graduated with that. It's one of my favorite programs to go to. Um, a lot of your students also end up in our Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. This is for students that have a 3.5 GPA and are very active on campus. These students, once again, get great scholarship opportunities at four-year college. Here we are, we also have, we teach leadership as well. We're meeting with the mayor um, as part of that leadership class, one of the wonderful ways that our students really get involved in their community. We also have an incredibly active student senate. Um, Jillian, one of your students, is active in the student <coughs> senate on our campus. Um, Hunter, I don't know, Hunter is a real presence on our campus, very involved, actually is a semi-finalist in one of the most competitive grants for community college students the Jack Kent Cook Foundation grant. She's also a presidential ambassador, and she was in the leadership class. Some other graduates from Easton that are doing great things as well. You know, we're a very engaged place. We have 60 plus different clubs and organizations. Uh, we're as engaged as many four-year colleges in terms of involvement of students. We have a wonderful theater program. These are some of the shows they put in place last year. Um, and some of your students, once again, are part of that. We have a very active um, intercollegiate athletic program. I just came for our women's basketball game, uh, 13 intercollegiate sports, and we do incredibly well. I won't go through all these, but we have a lot of conference leaderships and lots of examples of, of championships and coaches of the year. Um, probably the best example for us is our women's volleyball team. The last time they lost a game in our region, which is Eastern Pennsylvania and New Jersey, was in 2011. Not bad. Uh, ranked number six in the country at the end of last year. I think they were number five, year seven, the year before that. 
they, they go to nationals with great frequency, an incredible group. The baseball team also went to nationals this year, finished fifth in the country. Um, but perhaps what I'm most proud of with our athletic program is that two out of the past three years, we've won this award. In our region, one college gets the Champions of Character Award. It has to do with the academic performance of your students and the types of values that have come out of your program. So we're awfully proud of that. So some of your players. Dom Mosier, wow, what an incredible basketball player she is. Like I said, I just came from the Women's Game. She's the all-time leading scorer ever at Northampton Community College. Um, by the way, beating out the former all-time leading scorer, also from the East and Sierra of Disease. So um, you've got quite a, quite a legacy there. Um, yeah, she was 4 for 4 from the three-point range when I saw her today. And you've got a number of your students on our tennis team as well. Men's basketball team also doing doing very well. <coughs> Softball, women's soccer, you'll find them everywhere. So your students are doing well. Thank you for sending them to us. We celebrated our 50th anniversary this year, uh, 50 years old. If you've been at the celebration, that's what it would have looked like. Uh, really a pretty glorious day for the college. Um, I would say it is an incredible place that changes lives absolutely every day. Um, I'm honored to be there. I've been in higher ed almost 40 years now. Um, and I find that I move to tears probably once a week by the stories of the students and the profound impact that we have. So I want to thank you as the Eastern Area School Board for your partnership, for sending students to us, and supporting us in this incredibly important mission that we have. So thank you for your support. As always, I also come with a budget ask. Um, the number that we looked at across all the districts is about 1.8% uh, total, but we have a formula based on what number of students that you have you had coming here over the past five years, what does that look like? And then all that goes through the computer and comes out with the number for this year, which is a 3.2% increase that I would like to ask you to carefully consider and support us with. So. That's about as fast as I can talk. So. <laughs> Any questions from the board about the college and what we're doing? We're certainly excited. We think our ability to serve Easton will be even expanded more with our outreach center downtown. I think we've got a scheduled time to actually go down and look at that and see if there are ways we can partner in terms of utilizing that. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're also uh, starting conversations with uh, uh, with the college to see about um, receiving potential teachers uh, and students who want to engage in, in uh, education. As as uh, local superintendents, we've had a conversation uh, recently about the fact that we want uh, we think there's great advantages for us to try to nurture our high school students into the teaching profession in the hopes that they will ultimately stay here in the valley and stay uh, connected to the communities. And this is especially important because we're trying to uh, raise a number of minority students who are graduating from colleges and universities with teaching degrees that come back here and, and, and teach in our high schools or in our schools period. So um, that conversation is starting, and I'm uh, really glad to know that um, there's uh, that we're we're probably going to receive next year for the first time some of these students come into our classrooms and observe and watch great people teach, and so that's a good thing. Good. Yeah. Yeah. The more we can do, you know, to, to partner with you. That's what we're all about. I think one of the great strengths of this college is our ability to partner um, and really create that change. So we appreciate your support. Any other questions? Okay, I know you have a busy agenda. Thank you again so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Should I go around shaking some <laughs> Thanks very much. All right, moving to um, the agenda here, we're at um, item three, committee reports. So we will um, start with um, Mr. Snyder. Uh, yes, uh, just two quick items. Uh, in your uh, 
pack that you got this, uh, this afternoon before the meeting is our uh, is the fall newsletter from the IU. And you are also, uh, everyone on the board is invited to their Merit Scholar Recognition Ceremony. Uh, the details are on the form that you have there. If you're interested, you can RSVP. Uh, I believe the date is, to RSVP is May, March 16th, I believe it's said in my. Yes. March 16th is the date to RSVP if you'd like to attend. And the date of the ceremony is Thursday the 19th up at the Stroud's Moor Country Inn. Um, I have been there, that is a very, very nice place. And the only other thing I have is that our next meeting is next week. So we can do the report. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Snyder. Um, East Mary Public Library Report. Hello, uh, I'm Holly Hauser from the Board of Trustees at the Easton Public Library. Uh, we have just a few things to report to you today. Um, first is that our library has earned all five of the Silver Stars for the Pennsylvania Library Association's PA Forward Initiative. Uh, we're on track to earn our Gold Star this spring, uh, so that's very exciting for our library. It's a lot of hard work on the part of our employees. Uh, the Palmer Branch has been holding very successful children's book clubs. Uh, there's a Who Was series that was uh, recently discussed, The Brothers Grimm. And um, that's particularly exciting because the group that came out for that was all boys, which is unusual for uh, turnout for, for book clubs, uh, unfortunately with kids, but we're making progress. Um, and then the American Girl Group discussed Leah Dyson, and that group has grown so much that they've moved from the children's area to the large conference room because there's so much interest. Um, Another exciting event this past week, actually, um, librarians Barry Sanger and Audrey Cantor, along with our board member Anna Ramirez Lors, uh, gave a presentation to Lafayette College America Read Service Group. Um, that's a group of students at Lafayette College who serve as tutors in the schools of the Eastern School District. They do tutoring and one on one and small group support in schools and in after school programs. The library highlighted the work that they've been doing with. Um, Bilingual story times. We have a very successful program once a month called Orange Cuentos, where they're doing a Spanish story time, and they also talked about a Hindi story time that they've done and got some interesting feedback um, about expand expanding that program. Um, the library was also awarded a grant by the Lehigh Valley the Lehigh Valley Community Foundation, uh, and that money will go towards renovating and rearranging some of our space downstairs so that we can have an enclosed teen space right on the first floor of the library so that they'll have a little bit more, quiet, let me think of the right thing to say, not quiet space, but space that will not affect the rest of the library so that they can have discussions and be a little bit louder, but it'll be enclosed in their own room, which is very exciting. Um, so we are almost to our goal for making that happen. Um, and last but not least, you know the weather has been crazy. We've had to close a few times due to inclement weather. Um, and we just want to say thank you to the school district maintenance department for your quick response in plowing and treating our parking lot. Thank you. Thank you. Next, uh, CIT, Mrs. Hess or Mrs. Weiss? No, no report. No report. Thank you. The Hayden Community <laughs> College, Mr. Fano. I think most of my time is relinquished tonight, yes. uh, but I think I should acknowledge that uh, we do have with us tonight uh, John Sparsha and also Randy Galliano. I mean, he plays multiple roles with our district, and uh, they are the other two reps along with myself at the college. And lastly, uh, hopefully uh, we can give a phone call a little bit later with some positive news on the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Payne. Gentlemen, thank you for attending. Uh, next, the Foundation for Eastern Schools, Ms. Sayaga. Yes, so I attended my first um, Foundation Board meeting last month. We have another one tomorrow evening. And obviously the big item on the agenda right now are the preparations for the 5th Annual Gala, which is coming up April 7th. I hope members of the board will be able to attend or support the Foundation um, as best they can. And I also just wanted to highlight the gift from Lowe's um, and how wonderful that is for the students of our district and how having the foundation can really facilitate uh, those sorts of donations. Uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, please let me know. And please do take a look at the report in your packet, which lists some of the um, uh, donations that we've received. And I also do want to highlight that St. Luke's University Health Network is our lead sponsor for the gala with a substantial $5,000 donation to the event. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the Charles Schrin Science and Technology Initiative. No, 
aqui. Legislative dystrophina. The assembly, the budget process is underway at the state level, and uh, hopefully we have a budget before June 30. Thank you. Is that March first year? <laughs> uh, get a while. Okay. All right. Keep our fingers crossed. Um, our student report. Is Emily here? Hi, I'm Emily Mitzak. I'm the executive board president at the high school. Um, what's lately been going on is we just had our PTSA meeting on last Thursday and we discussed possible activities for the after prom part of prom. And at the next meeting, we'll be further discussing that. Um, we'll be hosting Special Olympics on Wednesday, March 7th. We usually have over 100 volunteers, student volunteers for the whole day, which will be free. Um, seniors ha are having their first grad meeting on Thursday, March 8th. The senior class has also been planning prom and senior picnic. And lastly, all student councils have been meeting with the Spirit Week advisor to discuss their assigned day during the week of April 30th, followed by uh, AAG on Tuesday. Thank you, Emily. The PTA report. This is our senior here. Thank you. Uh, EAEA report, Mr. Deal. Good evening, everybody. Um, <coughs> Mr. Reiner, thank you very much for uh, pointing out our amazing uh, Valerie Davis and her her talents uh, being used for good. Uh, it's, it's wonderful to see this the staff uh, doing such amazing things. Um, last week, the events of last week really shook me to the core. Um, and a number of my colleagues, uh, you all heard how senseless that act of violence was, and no doubt it impacted you directly as well. Um, uh, you also heard how many of the surviving students in Parkland reacted uh, to what happened. They're saying enough is enough, and they're organizing peaceful demonstrations an entire busload took I think it was eight hours trip to Tallahassee to go in and lobby their legislator about it. Uh, and hopefully that's not going to be the end of it. Uh, this is unfortunately the world that we live in where these horrors are abundant. Today, unfortunately, another name was added to that list. There was a seventh grade student from Ohio who shot himself uh, in the school. It's the 19th or 20th such killing of this young year. Um, when is this going to end? And obviously, I'm speaking to the choir here. Uh, we owe it to posterity, to posterity to figure out some kind of solution that shakes us from this stupor and wakes us to a more positive future. Um, I know that the school district and many others are, see are searching for policy changes to enact to provide for the security and safety of our students and staff. Uh, but first, I want to say, this sounds like a joke, but it's been seriously put out there that we should start arming teachers. That is an absolutely ridiculous thing to consider. Uh, let's leave the law enforcement and the guns to the law enforcement professionals, and let's leave education to the educators. Um, please do not consider allowing teachers to carry weapons into the schools. Um, also, there's possibly a concern about uh, having metal detectors installed in the high school. I did a little research on this today. Uh, a school in New York, a high school in New York City that would employ about the same amount of students and staff uh, would spend an extra 100 man hours every week just to make sure that the metal detectors were used appropriately. It's a very expensive proposition that doesn't really do much to change anything. Um, according to the Department of Justice, yeah, I caught everyone, sorry. Uh, if we're looking for preventative solutions to this nationwide epidemic, we need to address the mental health crisis in our country. According to the CDC, you might be aware of this, one in six teenagers has considered suicide. One in 12 has made an attempt. My daughter is one of those people who has tried to kill herself. Um, our staff has just completed their uh, annual suicide prevention training. Uh, but even with that, it's difficult for a teacher alone to notice the signs of uh, depression in their students, um, and let alone to refer them for help. Our students need easier access to counseling staff. And I'm not talking about our existence, existing guidance counselors. The guidance staff is stretched thin with managing mandated testing, student scheduling, 504s, trainings, meetings. 
and then they have 350 student caseload. We need more mental health professionals in our schools, not more guns. Uh, many students, parents, and educators from across the country have started getting together to organize rallies, protests, some kinds of demonstrations on this. I started a national group as well um, at asking for a National Day of Action for Safe Schools. I'm not asking for walkouts. I'm asking for people to write their congressmen, to make phone calls, to get together, and I'm hoping that it will be student-driven and that students will take the lead as they have in so many other places because this is about them and about their future. Um, so I'm going to ask uh, the board to please consider reasonable uh, mental health uh, needs if we're looking at policy changes for our students. And if there is any action that, that our students are asking to take, as long as it is reasonable, that it be uh, allowed to go forward. So thank you very much. I'm sorry it's not a more chipper uh, presentation today. Have a good thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Representative from the bus drivers, anyone is here? Is there school district diversity, Mr. Hunter? Yes, sir. Diversity committee met, uh, I believe it was two weeks ago. Uh, we had a meeting here. We're going to meet again on April 5th. Uh, we had three board members in attendance. Well, two in attendance and one on the phone because of the flu. But uh, we appreciated all three of them connecting to us. And uh, we're meeting on April 5th at the Boys and Girls Club at 530. Um, Mr. Dealey, that was, uh, we just arranged that this afternoon, so um, I'm hoping that, you know, we might be able to get some teacher reps there yourself, if it's possible, and uh, we're just going to continue our uh, uh, working toward the goals that we have in our, di our diversity uh, plan. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Reinhardt. Mm -hmm. Uh, at this time, any, if anyone from the public would like to be heard on any agenda items, if they would uh, come forward to the podium, please. State your name. Hi, my name is Krista Norwood. Um, so this is my first school board meeting, and I'm going to say forgive me because I do not know the proper etiquette, etiquette or how to broach such a topic. Forgive me for my shaking voice, and I'm sure that there will be tears. I grew up in Easton and Southside. I went to Easton School District my whole life, from being Cheston Cougar to a 1994 graduate. Um, I went on to become a registered nurse. I'll be a nurse for 20 years this year. Um, I'm married, and I have twin six-year-olds who go to Forks Elementary. Um, when my husband and I chose a home in Forks, a small part of me was very excited to see my children attend my alma mater, to learn to love Easton, and attend pep rallies, be a keeper, all those things that we love, okay? <laughs> um, and now, sadly, my excitement is overshadowed by fear. In light of the most recent tragedy in Florida and, and again today in, in uh, Ohio, I think it was, um, I just felt it in my heart to reach out of my fear and to make a difference or at least start a conversation about how we can protect our children, our teachers, and our community from falling victim to gun violence. I don't want to see news reporters in our front lawns. I don't want to see them interviewing our families and our teachers. And I just think we need to do something, something, anything. I don't know the answers. I don't know a lot about legislation. What I do know is I don't think gun reform is anywhere um, on the horizon right now, and I don't believe that would even make a difference right now. But I think we need to do something, and we need to do something now. There's always going to be guns. There's always going to be bad people. But we need to prevent them from getting into our schools. What I am proposing are metal detectors at our schools, at all levels. And Mr. Reinhardt, I, I read your post online, and I appreciate your dedication to our community, but I respectfully disagree with your quote that we were researching ways to protect our, to add more security while not creating schools that look like and feel like prisons. As a parent, I would much rather it look like a prison and be safe 
than creating a cozy looking death chamber. You need to stop pretending that the risks are not there. Sadly, this, this is our reality. This is our reality. I agree with educating our teachers what to do in the event of an emergency, but I think what's more pressing is to try and prevent it. I had friends who were school teachers listening to them discuss how they lay awake wondering what they would do if the shooter is in their building sick and insane. Listening to how they would be a human shield for our children while noble is heartbreaking. They are good people who want good things for our children, but they too have families and they have children and they deserve to be protected as well. I tried to find some evidence online about metal detectors, studies, pricing. I realized that there are a slew of things that go into these decisions. Um, there's cost, logistics. There would be need to be enough units for, the, for people to properly um, get in and out of the school in a timely manner. Um, I know there would need to be manpower. I know it's not a simple solution, but it's the only way in my mind that we can ensure our guns would not be getting into our schools. Their metal detectors aren't biased. Everyone goes through. Everyone. There's no question. There's no questioning who has a mental health problem, who's tired of being bullied, who wants to be the next glorified villain. There's no question. I have heard about other types of securities, lockdown devices that basically lock all the doors all the time. My concern with that is sitting ducks. And my God, every time I think about sitting ducks and we're referring to innocent children, it just skins me, and I can't understand how people can't be moved to do something about it. I've seen other systems that release smoke in hallways to deter or to alter the visibility of the shooter. I've seen monitors that feed directly to police stations. Again, they're all things that we do when the shooter is in our building. Well, I'm not naive to believe that we there can't still be violence. We need to make plans, and we need to have education for those what-if scenarios. I just feel like prevention is the key. Please help me and help our community. We need to know what, what we can do, how we can get a vote, how we can find out costs, what funds we need to implement those things. Um, I've seen grants that can be applied for. Um, I know I'm sure there can be fundraising. I'm not sure how all budgets are set up or how things, you know, monies could be moved around. And I just feel like we could all agree to put less money towards things that are of lesser significance to try and make this happen. I appreciate your time and your consideration, and I'm more than willing to step in, help out, do anything I can. But I just feel like time is of the essence, and I just don't want to wait until until it's one of our own. Anyone else from the public that would like to speak on the agenda items on, for tonight? Hi, my name is Christine Sosaurus. I am a daughter at Easton High School. On January 29th, we all received a call that stated there was a threatening message found in the laboratory at the high school. Additional police would be on site the next day, and the message said it's safe for your, for your children to return to school. This is all too familiar to us. In the two weeks since that call, three local schools were closed due to threats, and parking had 17 deaths and countless injuries. Our children are being murdered in the school. I called the high school and asked for more information. What did the note say that was left in the bathroom? I'm sorry, we don't share that information with parents, and we don't believe you need to know the specifics. She went on to say, but we believe it is safe for the kids to come back to school. That's a blatant lie in my mind. You have no idea if it is safe or not. Did you do a locker check? No. Are you doing a bag check upon entry? No. Are cha changes being made moving forward? No. Since Sandy Hook, where 21st graders and six adults were killed, there have been at least 239 shootings nationwide. 438 children have been shot, 138 have been murdered. Teachers are dying and put into positions that are unfathomable. If we make no changes, 2018 will exceed the 2017 deaths in school by three times. The latest tragedy left 17 children murdered and 15 injured. There are 150,000 children in this country who have witnessed school shootings. 
They're suffering from, from PTSD as if they've been in a war. It is a war. It's a war against our children. It is getting worse and worse. And every day when my daughter goes to school, I think, is this the day? We are failing our children. Our children know they are not safe. They know we are failing them. What are we going to do about it proactively to protect them? The number one job of this board, our community, and the parents is to keep our children safe. If there's snow or ice on the road or the threat of ice, we delay or cancel school to keep our children safe. If our child is sick, they are sent home. We talk about no bullying for the safety of our children. Our kids know how to hide under desks. They know how to stay away from windows. They know how to stay quiet. These are reactive measures, all which are necessary. By no means is it enough. We need to be proactive. We need to stop the weapons from being able to enter the school and help the troubled kids who think this is the only option. I'm requesting four things from the board tonight. Number one, parents have the right to know what the threat is so we can decide if it is safe for my child to return to the school and if it is in the best interest of my child. Two, children should only be able to enter and exit through a few doors. There are too many entrances at the high school specifically. The perimeters need to be protected. Three, keep weapons out. We need metal detectors at school, starting with the middle school and high school, as this is where most mass shootings happen. The cost for a metal detector is $5,000 plus man hours. I'm not kidding myself to think it's not expensive. I know it is. I heard this topic has been addressed in the past, and it was rejected as it would take too much time to enter the building if kids had to go through metal detectors. We should be ashamed. We are going to allow our kids to be in jeopardy over an administrative problem? Number four, we need to be proactive with our teachings and offer classes starting from first grade all the way through 12th. We need to teach the kids how to cope with their feelings, their emotions, what to do, who to go to. Guidance counselors' roles need to be changed. We need to research preventative measures being taken in other schools so we can assess and implement as much as we can to protect our children. We are paying $1 million for an iPad program, which is fantastic. What are we spending on the proactive safety of our kids? Education is pointless if they are not alive to go to the classes. It is a not, not a matter of if we can do this, it's how quickly we can do this. The children know we failed them. They have found their voice, staging walkouts and demonstrations. We cannot allow this to happen at Easton. We owe it to the kids. They deserve a safe environment. Please do not allow Eastern Area School District to make the national news. The mission statement of this board states, we will ensure a safe instructional environment and promote lifelong learning. My question to the board is this, will you take immediate action on this topic to ensure a safe instructional environment for the kids of Eastern? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the, from the public? And I'm going to ask that if it's related to this topic, there's another, there's another section on the agenda after we get through with our business for the public to be able to comment on that. This section is just for agenda items. But after the, the agenda items are passed, and there's a section where everyone, anyone that wants to comment on anything else can do so at that time. So you're saying you want me to go now, or you want me to wait until the end if it's the same topic? If it's, if it's of that topic, if it does not pertain to the agenda items that are posted on the agenda, then I ask you to wait until the section comes up where you can comment on non-agenda items. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Right, moving on to section five um, for the public uh, record, uh, in rotation of the executive sessions um, that are listed. Uh, on December, I'm sorry, January 23rd, 18, and February 15th of 18, just noted for the record. Um, I'll ask for a motion to approve the minutes. Uh, second. Any um, comments? I know that there were a couple of um, edits that were noted and made, so thank you very much. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We'll move into section seven, personnel. 
Um, I'll ask for a motion to approve uh, 7A, the retirement of a staff member at the Education Center is presented. So I move to regret. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion carries. 7B, a motion to approve the uh, resignation of two bus driver uh, monitors and one power professional at the middle school is presented. Second. Any questions or uh, comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 7C, uh, I look for a motion to approve the seven leaves of absences for staff members as presented. Second. Second. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I'd like to combine 7D and E and look for a motion to approve a salary increment for a teacher at the Shawnee Elementary School and to approve the voluntary transfer of a power professional from Cheston to the middle school as presented. So moved. Second. Any comments or, or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I'd like to combine 7 F and G for a motion to approve the employment of three long-term substitute teachers and 7 G the employment of two power professionals and one custodial maintenance worker as presented. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 7-H, uh, a motion please to approve the appointment of a middle school uh, track and field coach and an assistant varsity track and field coach as presented. Okay. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 7-I. A motion to approve the extra pay for extra duty for staff members at the high school in Palmer Elementary School is presented. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And the last one for the personnel, uh, 7J, motion to approve substitute bus drivers as presented. Motion. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. <clears throat> we'll move into Section 8, Academics. And um, if the board recalls at the February 6th uh, committee meetings, um, Ms. Sayago and the administration presented uh, various curricular um, revisions. Um, to, to a number of areas, so I'll look for a motion to approve uh, the instructional program changes uh, at the high school for computer science, history, <coughs> physical education, and math as presented. Second. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, we'll move to uh, E and F, and I'll look for a motion to approve the conference request and the two field trips as presented. So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? The motion carries. We'll move into section nine, policy, and I believe also presented at the February 6th committee meeting, Mr. Snyder, and the administration presented recommended changes to the attendance policy. So at this time, I'll look for a motion to um, approve the final adoption of policy 204 attendance as presented. So moved. Second. Okay, any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> that motion carries. We move into section 10, buildings and grounds. And we'll look for 10A, a motion to award the technology, uh, equipment, and services bid 
for upgraded equipment at the high school, Forks Elementary School, and Tracy Elementary <coughs> School to Integra as presented. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. I'll look to combine 10B and C with a motion to approve change orders for materials and for additional work days um, as presented. Moved. Any questions or comments? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. 10D under the uh, buildings and grounds. I'll ask for a motion to approve uh, the following contracts to the lowest bidders for the Forks Elementary School Capital Improvement Project pending review by the solicitor as presented. Second. Any questions or comments? Yes, I'm hoping that as this moves forward and everything, <coughs> have a of what the rooms will look like afterwards so that we can, you know, clear, clear, we see drawings and everything so we set our expectations accordingly. Yeah, I believe in our capital project meeting last week, I think that message was delivered I um, believe it was. fairly loud and clear. We'll make sure. Okay. So thank you, Mr. Fano. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We'll move to section 11, finance. And 11A, uh, a motion to approve the payment of bills as presented. Move. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 11B, motion to approve the 2018-19 Northampton Community College budget as presented this evening. So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? The motion carries. 11C, a motion to approve the William and Doreen Free Scholarship as presented. So moved. Second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. 11D, a motion to approve Mr. Simonetta's attendance at the Pasbo conference in March as presented. Motion. Second. Any questions or comments? Just uh, one question. Does that mean Mr. Simonetta will not be in attendance on March 6th? No, I will be leaving that evening. Okay, thank you. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All abstain. Number 12. <coughs> Other business. The motion to approve the PSBA resolution regarding the ESA vouchers as presented. Okay. Any questions or comments? Will we be sending this to our local legislators and bring it to the local media? That's correct. We will, first of all, we'll go to Pennsylvania School Board Association. We will, I will draft a letter. Uh, that will go to the local legislators, uh, and we can certainly, if the press doesn't cover it, if there's nobody here, then I'm sure we'll be contacted, and we can send a copy of that resolution to you today. Okay? Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. That motion carries. 12B, a motion to elect Mr. Robert Fainel to serve on the Northampton Community College Board of Trustees for a term beginning July 1, 2018 through June 30, 2024, as presented. Second. 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 Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. I'll look to combine 12 C and D. There's a motion to approve the expulsion hearing waiver forms for student number 44221 and student number 26478 under the terms as presented. So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. 
We'll move to section 13, public to be heard on non-agenda items. <coughs> Thank you for the Yeah, no problem. Uh, my name is uh, Luke Sistoris. I am a proud member of the Eastern Area High School graduating class of 2011. I'm currently a third year law student. And there's few things, if anything, I'm more proud of than the fact that I was born and raised and graduated from Easton High School. I love Easton. There's nothing I'm more certain of than I'm going to die in Eastern Pennsylvania. I will never leave. <laughs> so unfortunately, you guys might have to see me a couple more times. <laughs> but as, uh, as the woman who stood up here before and so eloquently stated, who happens to be my mom, that, um, that proudness is wavering because a few weeks ago, what happened was there were threats made at Eastern Area High School. Threats of violence on innocent children's lives. And when my mom called and asked to speak to people regarding this and the safety of uh, her child, my sister, what she was told was, your, your daughter is safe. The students are safe. We're doing what we can. Quite frankly, that is just not true. If I could be afforded a minute to tell each and every one of you a story. A couple weeks ago, I went to pick my sister up from school. She had a doctor appointment. My parents, unfortunately, forgot to write a note. They forgot to write a note saying she was going to have to leave school early. So I went. I went to pick her up, and I said, Hi, my name is uh, my name's Luke Sistoris. I'm here to pick up my sister, Hope. The, uh, the security guard said to me, he said, All right, uh, text her and, uh, and send her down. So my sister, she came down. She, uh, she walked into the office. The security officer looked at her, and he said, You know this guy? And she went, Yep. And we walked out the door, and she went to her doctor appointment, and she had a fine day. Now, my sister Hope did not die that day, nor did anyone else at Eastern Area High School. And that is no thanks to Eastern Area High School or anything that they have done regarding security at the school. My sister was, did not die that day because I wasn't a maniac with a gun. And what that is, ladies and gentlemen, is pure luck. I just as easily could have been some maniac coming in who has, who that little girl had no idea who they were or what they were doing there and felt pressured to say, yeah, I know this guy. And that could have just been the end of her. Thanks a lot, Eastern Area High School Security. Now, furthermore, there's no doubt, uh, given all the comments tonight, that this could be considered an epidemic. Children are dying in schools, they're being shot. And there have been, uh, been other instances like this in the past. For example, with regard to planes, it used to be pretty unsafe to fly on a plane. People used to kill each other by flying planes at the buildings, and thousands of people died. What was the result of that? I now can't take an open water bottle on a plane. It's safer to, for me to fly on a plane probably than it is for me to drive a car. It's certainly safer for me to fly on a plane than it is for me to walk into a school. Why? Probably mainly because of the tragic events of September 11th. And since then, what has been done is great. There has been unbelievable reform in our system. As I stated, it is safer to fly on a plane than do almost anything. And you know when that started? September 12th, 2000, uh, 2001. You know what that does for the people who lost their loved ones on September 11th? Absolutely nothing. That doesn't give little girls who lost their fathers, that doesn't bring them back. That doesn't give parents the opportunity to look lost children in the eye. The, the reforms that came after that did absolutely nothing for those people. Furthermore, Eastern Area High School is not done much regarding um, young security and things like that. Why is that? Because September 11th has not happened yet at Eastern Area High School. And as I stated earlier with that story, that is by pure luck. And the reassurance we have been given tonight is that conversations are happening. Okay, conversations are happening in my living room. I've been, I've been whispering about it back there. I wish I could say thank you for, for talking about this and conversing about it. Quite frankly, that's not good enough because our September 11th could be coming any day. And the reason it hasn't yet is because we've been lucky. Thank you.
I hope this young man becomes a prosecutor <laughs> and not a defense lawyer. <laughs> Evening, everybody. My name is Bill Tonkin. I'm a Palmer Township resident. I want to put my uniform on. <laughs> and I am temporarily and understandably embarrassed, frankly, to tell you I'm a retired FBI agent. And I say that because on January 5th, an FBI agent or an FBI analyst or what we call a support operations specialist took a call from someone in the know about the shooting that occurred last week. And that FBI agent or analyst or support operations specialist dropped the ball and 17 kids died. And that's why I'm embarrassed to say I'm a retired FBI agent. By way of establishing my credentials, I was a certified uh, crisis negotiator. I uh, was uh, selected to attend the FBI's National Center for the Analysis of Violent Crime, and I'm a certified criminal profiler, just to establish my credentials. I'm a Palmer Township resident. I have two sons over Eastern Area graduates. I want to bring to your attention, for those of you who haven't read this book, it's called School Shooters. I suggest everybody on this board read it. By Dr. Peter Langman, who fortuitously uh, lives and has a practice in the Allentown area. I would encourage the board that the next time you have a faculty-wide all-district meeting with all faculty and staff present, to invite Dr. Peter Langman to address your faculty and staff he is a noted authority on school shooters and mass shooters. I've heard him interviewed. He carries a lot of weight with me. Again, school shooters, Dr. Peter Lang, is an excellent read and very insightful. Secondly, I would encourage each of you, when you get home tonight, I think the uh, clip runs about a minute and 51 seconds. Take a minute and 51 seconds before you go to bed and pull up an internet uh, clip it's from the movie Basketball Diaries. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Basketball Diaries. There's a scene in that movie starring Leo DiCaprio, a tier one Hollywood celebrity. Leo DiCaprio walks into a classroom with a shotgun under his full length leather jacket, produces a shotgun, and shoots and kills his classmates and his Catholic, uh, his uh, priest, who's a classroom instructor. Basketball Diaries. As Dr. Langman writes, all the school shooters fed on a violent movies, violent video games, and he lists them. Basketball Diaries, Natural Born Killers, a video game called Doom. And for kids who are well balanced and well adjusted, they can watch those things and not be impacted. But when you have a population of kids who are, have mental health problems, who are maladjusted, who have been traumatized at home and or at school, and they feed on a diet of the violent video and violent Hollywood culture that is out there, we see the carnage that results. So for people who think that there's not a cultural component, they're kidding themselves. And we're all gonna focus on guns, and I understand that. There'll be no focus, I guarantee you, there'll be no focus on the cultural component that absolutely exists. Now, I didn't want to come here tonight without making suggestions. And along those lines, and by the way, <laughs> since I retired, I work part-time for a security consulting firm called Buckley Peterson Global over in New Jersey. As recently as two days ago, I recommended follow-up to an employee termination, an employee who was terminated from business in New Jersey two years ago, and I recommended that business go back and follow up with that former employee because, make no mistake, kids who are on the fence, kids who've thought about this, kids who've fantasized about this, are incited by these episodes. Make no mistake about that. These episodes do not dissuade would-be offenders. These episodes incite and encourage would-be offenders. A week ago, nobody in this room knew the name Nicholas Cruz. Now the entire country knows who Nicholas Cruz is. And we all know who Adam Lanza is. 
We all know who Dylan Klebold and Eric Harris are. These episodes and the attention they receive incite those would-be offenders out there. No mistake about that. So i just like to pass on the following. First thing I would do if I were on this board, I would conduct a mandatory anonymous survey of my student population. And I'd do that as soon as possible. With the first question being, do you intend to answer this survey honestly? And then I'd ask questions along these lines. Are you aware of uh, firearms being brought into this campus past or present? Are you aware of knives being brought on, et cetera, et cetera? Are you aware of threats that have been made against this uh, against students or this student body, past or present? And we can formulate that. I'm a big proponent in surveying your client population, and your client population obviously is your student body, and students know first. There's a term that I was familiar with long before I read this book, and Dr. Langan writes about it. The term is leakage, and it's very, very important to students and teachers because in many cases, and in fact in most cases, leakage, whether intentional or unintentional, is let out. That, that leakage, I know my time is up. If you're going to cut me off, then No, I'm just going to ask you if you can summarize you know, your, your additional comments. All right. Leakage is important to your faculty and to all people in your school district because it leaks out either intentionally or un unintentionally through school projects, through the uh, social media, through a simple statement like this. A, a would-be shooter says to a student who he happens to like or a girl he has a crush on, don't come to school tomorrow. It's called leakage. And that leakage needs to be reported and acted upon. Okay? So, I would recommend a survey that I would gladly <coughs> offer to help out with at no cost to this school district. Secondly, I would implement if it's not already in place, an electronic, anonymous, confidential, electronic notification system to your security personnel <clears throat> so students feel comfortable that they can reach out to your school security anonymously and confidentially about threats and leakage that has come to their attention. Thirdly, and this is particularly pertinent given what happened last week, that student, as you all know, had been expelled. I would strongly recommend, and I'm absolutely aware of workplace shootings where this has occurred. Because what I say to human resources personnel, just because you may have forgotten about a former employee, doesn't mean that he has forgotten about you. And the same applies to students. I would recommend, in consultation with county social services agencies, you implement an expelled student follow-up up until age 21, to check on their well-being. Because as we all know, Nicholas Cruz was an expelled student. And he was no longer a problem. And I think that can be, um, um, I think that can be justified and I think it could be implemented. As a follow-up to those former students from your school district who are out there with the same mental health problems, the same maladjustment issues, and now with a lot of time in their hands. Because some of these kids are disconnected, I would consider implementing a mandatory extracurricular for all students, no exceptions, even if that extracurricular were to occur during the school day, so that each and every student is involved in an activity where he or she is connected. That could run A to Z, ant farming to Zen Buddhism. But every kid has to be connected in, an act, in a productive activity. We have too many horror stories nationwide. <clears throat> One of my sons followed in my footsteps, and he responded to a school, school shooting in Reno, Nevada, three years ago. I'm not even sure I can, I can get through it. And I'm not sure I want this on tape. If anyone in this room thinks this is going to stop, this is not going to stop. This is what I call the new normal. The most, the greatest mass shooting in this country was six months ago, folks. Six, six months ago. We haven't had a school shooting in this country since today. So, 
Anybody who wants to bury their head in the sand, and I've talked to business owners, I've talked to hospital administrators who have the attitude that it can't happen here, and that has to change. Because our attitude now has to be, it can happen here, and what can we do to prevent it? And there are measures you can take to prevent it. And I will offer my services pro bono with anybody who cares, and Tim Case knows how to get a hold of me, and Kyle Geiger knows how to get a hold of me. And I will offer my two cents about what I call prudent and practical measures. And any security professional who tells you or makes a guarantee that he can prevent such incidents is somebody who should be fired. Anybody who comes in and, and claims that should be fired. Because I'll tell you a front, we can't guarantee that. And even if you lock down your school facility, how do you lock down your athletic fields after school? How do you lock down your band practice fields? There are always going to be vulnerabilities. So I recommend practical and prudent precautions that are cost effective, recognizing we can't lock down where we live and work and play. So I will offer you my services for what you think they're worth. Pro bono. And I will leave you with these suggestions, and I'll be glad to sit down with anybody, anytime, about the suggestions I made here this evening. But I will end with this. If anybody here thinks this is going away, this is not. There are an estimated 300 million weapons in the United States, an estimated 3 to 5 million AR-15s. They are not going away. So, what can we do realistically and prudently and financially feasible to help prevent them and help minimize them? And I think some of the things I addressed tonight can go a long way towards doing that in this district. It'll be a mistake, in my opinion, to not implement some of these suggestions I've made. I apologize if I've taken too much time. There is not a single issue you discussed tonight that is more important than this issue. I can no longer deal with business owners, and I've dealt with them, or hospital administrators, or school principals, and I've been in those schools, and I'd like to tell one quick anecdote if I may. I was in a school in New Jersey four or five years ago, which I will not identify. Speaking to the faculty, and it's a particularly pre a prestigious school, and I've done my homework, and I send it to faculty, in this particularly prestigious school, I said, how many of you think that a school shooting could never happen here? And everybody in my audience raised their hand because it's a particularly prestigious school, <coughs> desirable demographics. And then after everybody put their hand up, I asked them this question. How many of you think a school shooting could never happen here again? Because 35 years prior, their headmaster had been shot at his desk, and nobody in the school knew. I'll leave you with this question. Where are the safest schools in America today? The safest schools in this country today are Newtown Elementary School and Columbine High School, and look what had to happen for those schools to get to be the safest schools in America. I thank you for your time. I thank you for your indulgence.
However, I want you to be aware that I feel super strongly about this. I am willing to participate in any discussions or activities to ensure that I go home every day after school and that my mom never has to get a phone call that something happened, nor has to be in the shoes of a parent who lost their child while at school. I know that you can't control the environment outside of school or all the laws, but you can better protect us inside our schools. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the board? Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody who spoke this evening um, and for your comments um, with respect to the um, national tragedy that faces us. Um, I'd like to let the public know that the board did receive a detailed briefing um, in executive session prior to this meeting uh, this evening from the administration on the, the current security protocols that are employed by the district. In addition, um, the administration presented several options um, to further enhance the district's security protocols. And the board at this time has authorized the district to move forward as quickly as possible uh, to be able to address uh, the options that were presented. Um, and if necessary, to call an additional um, emergency meeting as soon as they complete all that. Uh, so that we can take action uh, with respect to the options that are currently being explored. I, I want to emphasize um, to, to everyone that you know the district, on a continual basis, always takes a look at its, uh, its security protocols with its security team and um, uh, is always looking at uh, any means to be able to provide a safe and secure environment. And I'll close with um, the district will be looking at additional security measures um, as quickly as possible to be able to um, put them in place because like everyone else in the audience, uh, the members of this board, the administration, we all want to make sure that the staff and the children on a daily basis come to a safe and secure learning environment. So. I can tell you that this is not um, something that um, has just been pushed to the side by the district administration and the board. Thank you. Mr. Chandler, if I could add yes. on that, just so everybody understands, prior to our conversations tonight, the administration was already looking at this and this tragedy happened to take place. So this isn't something that we're being reactive to. They were already in discussions prior to this tragedy. So just so everyone understands that, and, and going forward that we want to continue moving forward with it. Thank you, Mrs. Hess. Um, at this time, I'll ask for any other business from board members. Am I allowed to ask a question? I don't know the protocol. <laughs> if you, if, just if we want to follow sure. the protocol and just come to the podium. Thank you, Dr. Good morning. I just want to ask, you know, I think it's admirable and I'm so happy to hear that you're taking some measures, but I guess I would like to understand maybe what some of those measures are. Are you able to share any level so that we can feel some level of peace? I, I think when the time comes um, after the various options are explored and, rec and recommended for final board action, um, we will take the lead from law enforcement as to what's the best way and what we can communicate. Okay. Okay? All right. And I think just because I have the same concern as everybody to my son is at high school also. Um, but I think we have to also recognize that as a society, I think lately we feel we have the need to know everything. And sometimes for our security, it's also important for them to be able to do what they need to do. And sometimes by us knowing everything is also in hindering what they need to do. So. No, understandable. Certainly, we don't want to know right. anything that no, might I, jeopardize the measures right. that you're putting in place. Right. But we would like some level of comfort that you know as to what. No, I mean, completely be. understood, and it's a delicate balancing act. Of course. Uh, and, and that's why we work with the law enforcement <coughs> on that as well. Okay. But I, I want everyone to know that you know all the comments this evening were certainly um, appreciated and, and taken into consideration. Uh, but understand that this administration has not. Um, been idly sitting by um, prior to last week uh, to be able to to work on about the week before the continuous measures. 
I can't speak to the people before that, sir. Okay. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I can't. Um. Okay. Yes, sir. You asked that question. Let me tell you. Over the last six years, okay. Every year, there has been issues addressed as far as security and changes made, and changes being made in the building, and changes being made in the staffing, and it's always been recommended by the administration. A lot of it, as was mentioned here, is not made public because if it was made public, that would could hinder what the what the purpose of doing that is. But if you look at some of the buildings, especially if you were there recently, you know, uh, you you can see some of the various buildings, various. Uh, changes that have been made in the high school and in some of the other buildings. And some of the changes that have been made are basically unseen changes that go on behind the scenes. So this recommend this board or the superintendent and the administration for the last X amount of years have been coming forward. So it's not unusual and it's not unusual. They don't just do it at budget time, but they do it during the year as they see things or think about things. And it can be some small things from changes in cameras to other things, as I said, that are behind the scenes and not seen. Uh, sorry to no, that's okay. Any other comments from board members? Okay, thank you. Uh, once again, I want to thank the public for coming out to this evening's meeting. Uh, and I'll look for a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.